Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I'm in Lightroom Classic today. And if you've been here before and watched any of my videos, you know I am a huge, huge, as big as you get fan of masking. And the masking tools in Lightroom are fantastic. They're just world class and they've only gotten better. Now, one of the things that I really have appreciated about what Adobe's done in Lightroom is add AI masking, which they did a few months ago, and I made a previous video about it. It's called the landscape category, and it identifies up to seven different elements of a landscape uh, and will allow you to automatically create a mask. So it's things like mountains, water, skies, things like that. But the cool thing is it also identifies some other elements, things like artificial ground, architecture, things like that, that may not appear in a traditional landscape. In other words, this tool is a little bit misnamed because I typically, I open a landscape in Lightroom, I'm doing my editing, I go into masking, I choose landscape, let it identify the elements, and I go to town. But it also works incredibly well on cityscapes. That's why I said it's a little bit misnamed. So I've got this photo here. I've done nothing to it except crop it, straighten it, and take out a little bird but I'm gonna jump straight into masking. It's pretty even distribution of light. I would normally start in basic. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going straight into masking. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about Lightroom and how I approach my edits and get some tips and tricks, I've got a free 17 page ebook. It's an editing guide for Lightroom Classic. It's at the link below. Check that out if you're interested. But let's jump into masking and go into landscape. And like I said, it'll identify up to seven different elements. And in this photo, it identifies sky. Okay, great. I'm gonna go ahead and tick uh, that one. Architecture, you bet. Not really traditionally something you see in a landscape, but here it is in a cityscape, and it's just absolutely what I need. Vegetation, I don't really care about that. I'm gonna skip it. And then artificial ground, absolutely, that's exactly the spot that I wanna add a mask to. So I'm gonna do all that, create three separate masks, and we're gonna jump into it. So in this one, I'm starting with the artificial ground here. I'm gonna bring this exposure down because I wanna darken that area a little bit. So maybe about like that, and then I'm gonna add some contrast. And all I wanna do is kinda of darken it, give it a little bit of a emphasis, and I feel like it was too bright. Overall, the photo's kinda of bright. And of course, if you've seen any of my cityscapes, I like them to be a little bit moody, uh, which means they need to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of warmth here, which will play into the street lights, which are still on. This was very early morning in the city of Prague uh, a number of years ago. And so I'm adding a little bit of uh, temperature and tint, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of texture and clarity, which is something I typically, on a cityscape, like to add to man-made structures uh, like bridges here, because that stone, to me, should be a little bit crunchier, a little bit more textured, and this mask is perfect for that, and texture and clarity are perfect for enhancing that. So, before, in that foreground area, the bridge itself, and after, I think we're in good shape. I'm gonna go straight into architecture, and this is what I love. Now, it didn't get everything, and you can, I'm not gonna in this video, but you can click on this and click add and go get a brush and add to it. I'm just gonna skip over that step and just focus on the overall um, architecture sele selection that, uh, that Lightroom has made for me. But let's pretend it's gotten exactly what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and lift that exposure a little bit because this is how I edit the photo. I wanna isolate that bridge, which I did in the first step. I wanna isolate this uh, group of buildings and I wanna brighten them a little bit. I'm gonna add some contrast as well. So I'm gonna bump that up quite a bit because I wanna create a little bit more interest, a little bit more drama. I'm gonna increase the temperature and tint as well. So the temp is gonna to go to about a 10 and the tint is going to about a five. I'm just kinda of leaning into the slightly warmer look in those. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of saturation too. I generally don't use the saturation slider really at all. Every now and then, just a little bit, it comes in handy, and this is one of those times. And then texture and clarity, as I said a moment, about, um, moment ago, anything that's kind of man-made, I feel like I wanna give it a little bit more crunch. So I did something similar to the buildings as what I did with, the, uh, with that foreground. So if you look at the architecture and that selection, there it is before, definitely flatter, and there it is now, a little bit more pop, a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast, which I think helps quite a bit. And of course, sky, you're always gonna have a, well, not always, I guess, depends on how you shoot it, but generally speaking, if you're doing a broad cityscape like this one, you're gonna have a sky, and that's why I think these landscape masks are a little bit misnamed because they're super applicable in other kinds of photos, and uh, cityscapes being a 
primary uh, topic of mine, this comes in just super, super handy, and I love that. So I'm going to go about a negative 12 here, just cool it off. And so if you look overall, my masks so far, and these are the automatic landscape masks. These are the AI masks before and after. Massive difference in the photo, to be honest. Now, the next thing I want to do is go play with the colors a little bit. And when I play with colors, I always go to calibration. It's just my favorite. And I'm going to do something very simple here, which is take this hue on the blue to about a negative 40 or so. So I'm going negative a bit, and then I'm going to take the saturation and go to the right, positive, about 30. And that just gives that nice, it's kind of the teal and orange look, which I know it, it's, it's a cliche. I mean, let's be honest. Everybody does it. And you know why? <laughs> because it looks really cool on cityscapes. I just honestly, I think it looks good. That's why it's so popular. And once you start to kind of pick up on seeing um, the kind of uh, orange and teal look, you start to notice it everywhere. Movie posters and lots of different signs and things like that. Anyway, before and then after calibration, just a nice little bump in color. And I think that looks really good. Now, there's one other trick. It's really two steps, if you will, that I want to do to wrap this up. And it's actually back in masking, but I wanted to save it for the end. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Actually, I'm going to go here. So uh, I like to add a vignette to my photos. And, you know, the vignette is fine, but there's a thing missing from Lightroom vignette, which is the ability to brighten the center of that. So you got to kind of go do this separately. Now, the other thing that's kind of missing, there's two things, I guess, really missing from the vignette. And that is not just being able to brighten the center, but also being able to place this vignette anywhere you want, where you can have the center of the vignette somewhere else. In other words, an off-center vignette. So when I want to do either or both of those, Here's how I like to do a vignette. First, I pop into masking, and then I create a new mask, and this is going to be a radial gradient. And what I want to do is just find uh, whatever makes sense here for my uh, for my vignette. So first things first, I'm going to do something about like that, and it's off center, so it's going over kind of to the left where it's kind of lined up more in line with the bridge because it's kind of off center the way I composed it. I think that looks good, except. I need to darken the edges. The mask is on the inside, so I need to invert it. So you just click on these three dots and click Invert Mask 1, and then there you go. And all i got to do now is just drop the exposure a little bit until it suits my sensibilities or whatever for this mask. So that's probably a little too much. 0.6, let's call it. Something like that. So if you look at the before, there you go. Obviously quite a bit brighter on the edges. And the after, there you go, a bit darker on the edges. Looks good. I think that's fantastic. But now what I want to do is actually pop that center of the vignette by brightening it just a little bit because it's going to draw the eye and it's going to uh, really focus on the subject, which is leading your eye down this bridge. So I want to use the same mask, but I just want to invert it again and duplicate it. So you can go in here, duplicate and invert. So duplicate, make another copy, and then invert, give me the opposite of it. So it does that. It puts it on top of the mask stack. And now as I hover, you can see... There's my mask. Same as what I started with originally to make a vignette, but I had to invert that one to get the outside darkened. Then I duplicated and inverted back to get the center. And now what I want to do is just brighten that in, uh, inside a little bit. So I'm going to do like a 0.25, something like that. I don't want to go too much and you don't want to make it too big. But I also, I think I want to raise the temperature just a little bit to give it a tiny bit of warmth and maybe a little bit of tint as well, just to kind of play with those colors. And that's a vignette trick. Now, it's two steps, but if you look at the before and the after for the inside of the vignette, I think that looks nice. And, of course, the outside of the vignette, we already covered before and after. So you put all the masks together before and after. Very, very massive difference. The only thing not included in the masks is this calibration. And that just shifted my colors and gave me a little bit of a color grade. There it is before without the color grade using calibration. And there it is now. And those are some tricks and tips that I like to use with the landscape masks on cityscapes. Again, because AI identifies different elements, including things that reside in cities, which can be water, but also artificial ground, maybe some foliage, some architecture, the sky. They're called landscape masks, but they're applicable to a lot more than landscapes. Hope this has given you some ideas. One last look at the photo. That's how we started. And then with a few quick masks that mostly were done for me automatically and a major, or excuse me, a minor adjustment in calibration, which made a major shift in colors, you can take a photo from kind of blah to beautiful like that. That's how I do it in Lightroom. 
Thanks for watching, my friends. Check out that free ebook if you're interested. And I'll be back real soon. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.